What's up everybody, it's your boy Meme here. Uh, you're seeing me from a pretty head-on head on angle right now and I look pretty low quality and the reason why is because um, I'm recording this on my laptop. Uh, you know, typically you see me from the side and that's because, you know, when I have my desktop view, I think it's uh, sort of a better angle to look like you're looking at the desktop. You know, if you're kind of view viewing me from the side, you know, it's like the screen's here and like I'm here and I'm looking at it. But, um, you know, uh, head-on's also okay. Uh, this is a good example of the sh Think Shutter. So there's just like a little privacy protector in the laptop. So that's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be showing you guys my status bar because I said I was going to yesterday. So, um, whoa. Uh, now you can see OBS, but let's move to a different workspace. So um, I don't know how well you guys can see this, but this is pretty much my, my status bar. Uh, so Right here is um, all of my workspaces. So I got one, two, three, four. I like them kind of wide because, you know, um, I'd rather have them be wide than be taking up like height real estate and on the screen. Um, right here is our Wi-Fi network that we're connected to and my internal IP address on that. Um, yeah, uh, the reason why I have that on my status bar on my laptop and not on my status bar on my desktop computer is because on my desktop computer, I always know what I'm connected to. Like, I'm always connected to the same network, but, you know, I'm going to be bringing this laptop to college, you know, and uh, it's pretty important to know what network I'm connected to and if it's like a public network or not and stuff. Um, so I just have that there. Um, uh, right here, I have my uh, Pac-Man updates, and you'll notice that my... Uh, cursor actually turns into like a little click cursor uh, when I highlight over that and that's because I don't want to do it right now because I don't know what information it could possibly reveal nothing like crazy you know but like you know I, I just don't want it to not be able to control what you guys see um, if I click on it it would open up an alacrity instance of Peru running so that would just update my whole system um, up here is my standard uh, date module where it shows, you know, the name of the month instead of the number. So instead of saying like 230911, oh, also it's, it's 911 by the way, that's crazy. Um, but instead of saying like 230911, you know, it, it like looks like words, you know, and it, it's like telling me the time. Uh, right here is my um, volume. I think if I scroll on this, I can actually change the volume here. Um, yeah, uh, I think if you click on it, it would open up Pavu control, but I don't have Pavu control. I just copy pasted that specific config. Uh, right here is my backlight thing. You can also scroll. Oh, no, you can't. You can't scroll. Hold on, what? Oh, well, hold on. Let me get a check if I'm still recording. Yes, okay. I, I, everything's going well. Um, yeah, so I could just like change my backlight um, and it'll go along and it uh, bottoms out at 10%. Um, I gotta be honest, I actually got uh, Bing to write this, the backlight script for me because it's particularly good at things like that. But, um, you know, yeah. Uh, for some reason, I, this is just an issue with how Bing wrote it. You know, it's a fine script. Um, but the output of X backlight is like kind of weird. As you can tell, it's like 91% and then I max it out and it's at like max 98%. But then I go down and I go back up and then it's at like 100%. So I don't know exactly what that is. Uh, that Bluetooth thing is pretty cool, so I'll save that for the end. Um, right there is my battery life, uh, which is 65%. I just figured out how to... Um, oh, I talk about this. Let me, um, I just figured out how to have my max uh, battery percentage be 80%. Um, ever since I got that new thick uh, um, battery for my laptop, I've been trying to figure it out. Um, so it turns out the... Uh, you know, I thought I had set it up, but turns out I hadn't. Um, the thing that you have to do is in the configuration file for TLP, which is the software you use to configure your battery. Um, not only do you have to say what the maximum charge status is, which to me was 80%, you also have to say what the minimum charge status is as well, even if you're not using it. So I just set it to zero because I don't really care when my laptop starts charging. Um, but I do really care uh, when my laptop starts uh, stops charging. Uh, if you have the choice to, it's very, very, very important and good to have your maximum laptop battery uh, just max out at 80% because it go, if it goes up to 100% all the time, that's really bad for battery health. And, uh, you know, I don't want this battery to be, like, bad after a few years, you know. Even though, it, it, you know, it'll definitely be worse after a few years, but it'll be way worse after a few years if I never set a battery limit. Um, let's go back here. Um, this is really scuffed. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, over here is... Um, the 
air quality, the AQI for Seattle. Um, right here is just the tiniest little globe icon of all time, if that's what you're wondering what it is. Um, it's green if it's good, then it gets yellow, red, uh, yellow, orange, red, you know, purple. Um, right here is a little weather module. Uh, this is way better than the weather module on my computer because the weather module on my computer shows like a forecast. And, uh, you know, respectfully, I think a forecast is, is kind of a psyop. I know it's going to be colder in three hours than it is now. You know, you, do, you don't need to tell me. Um, so, and if I ever actually want to check like a regal forecast, like it's on my watch face. It'll tell me what time it is for the next like five hours, you know. So um, this is just if I'm on my computer and with the same ease I view the time and date with, I want to be able to view the air quality uh, or forecast or um, temperature is there. So it shows how it's cloudy and 69 degrees outside. Uh, right here is... Um, my disk usage. Uh, I used a little book icon here. Right here's my RAM usage at 19%, and right here's my CPU usage at 66%. Uh, you know, normally it's at zero, uh, or like five, because I have Brave open, but right now I'm recording, and this laptop has no dedicated GPU, so it's kind of crazy. Uh, now, uh, time to get to the to the Bluetooth module, right? The Bluetooth module, module is really interesting. Uh, I did say that it's really cool and that's why I want to show you guys it last, but it's also because um, I'm not entirely sure how it's going to work with the recording here. Um, basically, the way I have this set up is, I'm sure I can make it toggleable. I just haven't done that. Um, if I left click on it, it connects my AirPods if I have them in my ears, and if I right click on it, it disconnects my AirPods so I can connect them to my phone. So. Let me switch over here um, and let me grab my AirPods. I should probably set this up for it to notify me on Dunst as well, but you know. So theoretically, let you know. Let's hopefully my mic doesn't cut out, or because it would switch to the mic on the AirPods, but OBS doesn't recognize that, right? Um, but let's see. So I so I click on here. Should connect my AirPods. Let's see. It'd be embarrassing if this didn't work. There we go, they're connected now. My AirPods just made a little connection. Can you hear me still? Okay, you can still hear me. Um, and then if I right click on them, it, they, it disconnects. And uh, you know, I just think that's very, very cool. So you know, if I'm ever using my laptop and I want to use my AirPods on my laptop, I could just be like, oh, let me just, let me just press the Bluetooth button. You know, and I pressed it and now it's connected. You know, and then I just, I'm so proud of that, it's so crazy. Um, you'll notice I'm using a certain icon pack. Uh, it's the icon that comprises this and 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 not this, I use weather icons for this one. And this and this and this. It's an icon pack called CG. I also use it on my um, on my desktop polybar configuration. And uh, I just think it's really, really cool. Um, I like how sort of endearing and silly a lot of the icons are. Um, and I just really like CG. I don't know, I, I, I like, I just like how CG icons look. And you know, a lot of people use like emojis in their polybar and that just doesn't sit right with me. You know, emojis are, I, I can switch to my other scene here. Emojis are sort of, there we go. Emojis are sort of um, like, the like they're a language that should only be used by the applications that you interact with you know um, so it kind of freaks me out to see a desktop to see something that is in the system like the system like polybar not like the user space like brave even though they're technically both in the user space but you know, like the stuff you interact with regularly that, that doesn't seem like it's part of the system. Uh, I, I, you know, um, I like that to have emojis, but if it's like the system, I don't like the system to have emojis because then it just seems like unprofessional and like, maybe it's just Windows brain worms, right? Because Windows never, you know, last I used Windows, they never really used emojis in like primary system functions, but something that I would consider a primary system function, like the status bar, um, I don't think should uh, have, uh, what am I saying? I don't think should have uh, emojis in it. So that's why I use cool little CG icons. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. See you, dude.
I'm gonna try and make a uh uh thumbnail for some. I'm so insane. I should make a. Th I'm gonna make a thumbnail on my laptop now. Uh, goodbye.